Hey everyone, this is Stacy with SF Johnson Consulting and Construction Services, and we are going to go over just some uh, parts of our uh, foundation or structural estimate based on our takeoff that we did a few days ago on this uh, uh, auto repair location. And we did the takeoff and all of that is on video already on, on the channel. And so just wanna point out how we would actually put the estimate together. Now, remember when we're doing, now, this is the structural set. And so in the structural set, in our set, you know, it could be a number of things depending on what you're doing. But this is a existing building that has an extension of a metal framed uh, building. And so we're basically putting in the foundation that the metal frame building is going to sit on. And then once it's built, then we have all of the interior framing that's going to go inside the building. And so structural is all of the foundation, all of the roof framing and everything related to this. If there are headers and posts and beams and columns and column pads, then those are the things and all of the reinforcement, all of the rebar or the mesh or whatever. And so uh, I'm just going to go through some points. This ended up being a $1.5 million estimate for the structural set. And so just want to go through, you know, when we're doing, you know, we come across and I, you know, methodical, I do everything just in line. And so the first part of a structural set is the foundation. And so, yes, we did uh, broke down the foundation based on the section views and individual items. So we had quite a few different 12, I believe, of the smaller column pads they call A, uh, C, B, I think we had two or three. And we had a bigger one, only one of C, and uh, and a bunch of other rebar. And then in here, in the new building, we had the paint booths that had 8-inch foundations and 8-inch walls. And so that's a whole different section. This is a, the call-out right here, and then the full slab, which was 4,000 and some square feet. And so... Won't go through the full estimate because 1.6 pretty much million dollars worth of estimate we have right here. And so there's just some portions like, um, and again, when we have a existing building and we're adding on to it in terms of the foundation, you're always going to have some portion of the dowels or rebar basically that you are going to go from the, uh, uh, from the new uh, foundation into the existing and so this with this section view F over uh, S201 so we'll look at that one first F as in Frank over S201 so we go to page 201 section and I always get that's 301 so F as in Frank and so yeah now you can imagine for each one of these section views, we had a line item on the estimate, but we'll just look at a few. And so this is the existing building, this is the new building, and so anytime we do have that, we're gonna have some dowels that secure new to existing. And so yeah, we're gonna put a half inch dowel, one foot rod, at times uh, four and a half minimum, that's how far it's going to go into the concrete on this end, right, with, da, 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 at every 24 inches. And so, you know, when you do the takeoff, then you want to figure out, okay, if we got to place it every 24 inches, then if we have, how many feet of that did we have? F over, what is that, 201 or 301? S we had 71 feet of that so it says and so we'd have to determine let's go back to F so if we had 71 feet of this so we know continuous number four there'd be 71 can, feet because whatever we see at the section view is that much in takeoff or in length so 71 feet of that section means 71 feet of that which means now for our placing it every 24, that means every two feet. So we just take the 74, let's say 74 or whatever, 74 divided by two, right? Because we're placing every two feet. And so we have 37 locations that we're gonna be placing that. So we know how many of those or how many linear feet of that we need. 
And so, you know, that's what we had to do for every section view that you see. <clears throat> okay, and so we had a lot of the, you know, drilling the holes and the column pads now. We got all of this out of a cost book, so you got to make sure you're getting your cost, not from your uncle, <laughs> but from a construction cost book, where he gave us now the cost per column pad, and the column pads, again, were based on a certain size, right? These are the column pads A, B, and C, certain size with certain reinforcements, so we know what size they are. Right, same with the continuous footer, we know the size, so we go to our good cost book and it helps assist us with the material cost and also the labor cost, the man hour units. How long is it going to take us to do a certain thing per unit? Okay, and so that way we can determine how many everything we need. All right, so ah, section view that's one part, and another part of the section or in the structural set is some of the framing, right? And so we have some beams. So again, section views, we'll look at E, right? E over S301. So let's take a look at that on the plan. E over S301. So 301E, and that's our section view. And that's our telephone. And so now we know that this was a fun one. So, you know, you have to, hopefully you're a nerd. Well, if you're an estimator, you have to have fun doing this. And so you start from top to bottom. So now we have a continuous 2 by 10 with three 16D nails, uh, joists at each joist. And we have 2.25. Uh, Two, two and a half, it's late. Two by four studs at the 16 we have to add, then the Simpson ties, then the treated, oh, this is what I wanted to show you. No, maybe not. Yeah, and then the treated, this and that. Okay, and so E over three, let's look at the estimate. E over three, S301, where is that at? Mm -hmm. There we go. We had 67 feet. Okay, so all the way down. The studs we did by square feet because we knew that they were a foot and a half high times 67. That gives us, gives us that. And then cost book kicks in. And then the Simpson ties. We know how many because we do that same thing. We turn 67 feet into inches. And then we divide by the placement. So if we have to put every 8 inches, we divide by 8. If we have to put every 32 inches, we divide by 32. If we have to put every 16 inches, we divide by 16. Okay, and so that's that. And then there was one other. Sometimes in the structural set, you have to... Okay, so that's the paint booth and how we figured out all the rebar and everything for that. There were two of them, so we figured out the cost for one, and we multiplied by two. And then there was one other. Uh, here we go. Now we're at the roof framing. Okay, so the new roof, what well, we have to have 18 uh, gauge studs hair pit we got all of that okay and then we had to have a metal deck but this is what I want us to look at is a lintel number one in section view a over s301 so let's look at that one because in that one we had fabricated well it, it will end up being a piece of fabricated steel and so I want to go over quickly how we determine the cost and price and all of that so look, let's look at A over S301. A, right here. <clears throat> so at the wall elevation at the entrance. Okay, so we had the studs, the 6-inch or 8-inch metal. That's easy. But then we have these C8 by 1875. Okay, and so it, uh, these are C-beams, you know, steel. 
You have I beams, J beams, C beams, whatever. Okay, so this is a C beam. And basically, the second digit tells us uh, the weight per linear foot. So how many feet can this beam hold, or how many pounds can this beam hold per linear foot? And so that's always the standard. So whatever you see by, whatever by, whatever, that second digit, always, it always means, sometimes you have what, 25, 125, whatever. That means that that's how many pounds per linear foot that that beam will hold. And so in order to turn that into a price, we have to turn, because fabricated metals are priced by the pound. And so we have to change this into pounds. And the way that you do it is, if it holds 18.75 pounds per linear foot, you just multiply the linear feet by the pounds, the number of pounds, and you have how many pounds. And then you can charge by the pounds. So what is that? We'll look at that section view on the estimate so you can see how that's priced. A over S301. A, I think it's farther down. And that's about all we're going to... A over S. Okay, and so we had the C8 by 18.75 we had 17 linear feet of that and so we say 17 times 18.75 is 319 pounds and so cost book again kicks in and tells us how much it is the cost of that per uh, per linear uh, per linear foot or per pound and then you can figure out the cost and then we have to do some uh, and that is the cost to uh, install. It's the full price of, of everything for that. And so I got to see why we don't have a, in that, and that is the man hour unit for that too. So the cost, so it's going to take 13.40 hours to install that according to the cost book. Okay, so that's the one thing that's kind of different if you're dealing in something other than, you know, metal studs or whatever. When you have fabricated metals, you have to take, uh, determine how many linear feet you have and then multiply that by the pounds per linear foot. You have the pounds and then, yes, the good cost book's going to tell you the cost per pound. All right, so that is a full, the full uh, structural I mean, all we did was go to each section view, right? We had uh, how many linear feet, turn that into square feet, you know, and uh, it's just crazy. But in the end, it's a whopping $1.6 million. And this is just the base rate. We haven't even added a overhead and profit. So any questions at all related to anything you see, please uh, email me at education at sfjohnsonconsulting.com. Uh, please also uh, give us your thoughts on the presentation and make sure to subscribe. All right, we'll see you next time.